Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about recursion and iteration and how you can use both recursion and iteration to create a Java factorial function. I'll step you through it and I'll show you how it works. This is 10 factorial. That's one times two times three right through to the number 10, and it ends up equaling something like 3,600,000 in change. And so how would you do this in your Java code? How would you do a Java factorial program? Well, there's a couple of different approaches, one of which is to do it iteratively. And so to do it iteratively, you would declare a variable, say the factorial product, right? Every time you multiply something with something else, you end up getting a product as opposed to a sum that you get with addition. And then you would loop through all of these numbers starting at one, most loops start at zero, but with a factorial, we don't want to multiply by zero. That'll get you zero right off the bat. We want to start with the number one and then do all of the numbers right up until 10. And just each time through this loop, keep multiplying them together. So the first time we get into this loop, we're going to have the factorial is going to be one. The number that we use is going to be one. So that's going to be one times one. And then when we go through it again, it's going to be one times, well, the number two, which is going to be two. And so we're going to have the third time through, it will be two times the number three, which will give us six and so on and so forth until it goes through 10 times and we get three million in change. And so that is how you would do an iterative, an iterative um, Java factorial program. If I do a little print statement, there we go, right at the end of that particular method here right at the end of that function iterative java factorial result is the factorial product and then run this program so right click and say run as a java application you can see that we get well the numbers printed out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then we get the result which is three million and change and so this is an iterative approach a looping based approach to solving the java factorial programming problem but how might we do it with recursion? And so with recursion, you can avoid a loop. Uh, with recursion, what you do is you just code a method that is programmed to call itself. So look at this. I've got a little program here called the factorial function. And what this factorial function does is it takes a number. So let's say we use the number five for this example, a little easier to manage than the number 10. And so if you pass the number five here, what it would say is I'm going to do the factorial of the number five. I'm going to do that by calling myself with the number four, three, two, and one. Notice that we have a breakout of the loop at number one. So when it's number one, we just return the number one. That breaks us out. But if it's anything greater than one, what we do is we take the current number that we're working with and then multiply it by a call to this function with a number less than one. We do this iterative, we, this happens recursively, not iteratively, recursively, until finally we've got the Java factorial of a particular number. And so what happens sort of behind the scenes with this when you actually call it, let's actually take a look at the code that we would put into our main method in order to call this function. It would look something like that. Hey, declare the variable, n factorial, um, call the factorial function with the number five, when this loops through, it'll give us the solution. When this does loop through or recursively move through, what happens is every time this method is called, so the first time it calls factorial function five, and it tries to multiply the number five with a call to this method with one minus the method, which would be four. So you end up getting a stack of these method calls, five, four, three, two, one, loaded up on the JVM. That's why we call it a stack, because you stack method calls one on top of another. Finally, when we get to the condition of one, there's no more stacking. And what happens is the JVM then unrolls this and calculates these methods from the bottom to the top, passing in the return value for each. So here we get the value of one return, because if one is passed in, we just return one. If somebody passes in two, what we do is we take two and multiply it by what was returned by the previous call, which in this case is one, which would return two times one, which is two. And then again, we do it with three, four, and it all gets unraveled or unrolled. It might be easier to visualize this here. Take a look at this visualization. This tries to explain a little bit of what happens when we call five factorial. 
So somebody calls five factorial, well, it calls this method, which then calls this method with one less, that calls factorial function four, which calls factorial function three, which calls factorial function two, which calls factorial function one, which kind of has this break here, which says stop stacking up all of these recursive function calls and instead return one. So this now returns one to the previous program. The previous program was passed in a two, so it takes the number two and multiplies it by one, which gives it the number two. So this returns two times one. And now this program here is passed in three. And so this now multiplies three by what was returned by the previous program, which is two and so on and so forth until this one finally runs and returns five times 24, which is 120. And so this is sort of the stack of method calls that happen in order to get this recursive set of calls for the Java factorial program to work. And I'm gonna run this program. So I'll right click on it and say, run as a Java application. And you can see indeed it calculates the number 120, but I actually just wanted to maybe even debug it. So it's actually more interesting if you debug it. I'm gonna put a little breakpoint in there, click Control S, and then I'm going to say run as, no, debug as a Java application, and just watch what happens here. So the first time through, we call the factorial function. You can see that method call over here. This is called the stack trace for the JVM. So we went into the recursive Java factorial programs main method. That's the main method there. The main method called factorial function because that's where the breakpoint is. That's where it stopped. Now I'm actually going to click play and this calls that method again, but notice it will pass in one less than the number originally passed in, which would be the number four. So if I click over here on recursive Java program, you can see that this method was called with the number five. You can see the number five up there. This one was called with the number four. So you see four up there. And you can actually just go through this, right, each time. So now I'm at the number two. Now I'm at the number one. And so you can see n equals one here. Keep an eye on that, that variable. So that's the last method that was called. It's at the top of the stack. And there's it is at two, there it is at one, three, there it is at four, and there it is at five. Now finally we've hit the condition which stops the stacking. And if I run this again, notice that it goes through the stack, it kind of unrolls it. Now we go from one to two to three. And you'll see the, the variable n is getting uh, increased here. That's the number that was passed in. We go over again until finally all of these multiply each other together and eventually we get back to the n factorial, and you can see now the n factorial has been set with 120, which is all of those sub-method recursive calls multiplied by each other. And there you go. That is how a recursive Java program works, especially a recursive Java program that figures out the factorial of a number. And there you go. Those are the ins and outs of Java factorials with iterative loops and recursive functions. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on Java, enterprise software development, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on the YouTube.